Wilmington, North Carolina, also still getting hammered by Florence tonight. The Weather Channel's Mike Seidel is live there tonight and joins us now. Mike, how are conditions now? Hey, Alex, it's almost impossible to hear you out here. It's hard to believe that we've been in this for about 24 hours. The wind still gusting upwards of 50 miles an hour. We had our first, we had our first squall last night at about 1030, and it's been almost nonstop ever since. And, you know, now we're on the backside of the hurricane, so the wind's coming in from the southeast and south. Uh, last night, it was from the northwest that once the, the eye came right by us here, just across the bridge in Wrightsville, North Carolina, Wrightsville Beach, the winds came around in the northeast and pushed the water up. Now we do have another high tide coming in uh, at midnight. We'll see if the surge comes up as high as it did today. We had uh, at least a four foot surge out of Wrightsville Beach. That was the noon high tide. Uh, just a wild night out here, driving over here. The visibility was down to about a block or so with this torrential driving uh, rain. There are trees down everywhere. And power, last time I looked, was out to over 800,000 customers uh, here in North Carolina. The real issue here is that the what was the hurricane, now tropical storm Florence, is just not moving. I was thinking back, I've covered about 70 tropical storms and hurricanes, and I've never seen this kind of wind and rain combo, the magnitude of this combo, continue for this many hours. Uh, this is uncharted territory for me. Usually hurricanes move faster, that we will get heavy rains, but the winds can die down as the system weakens. But as you can see, we're still in some very strong gusts over 60 miles an hour. And even though it's a tropical storm now, uh, the rain will be a big issue right on through a good part of the weekend. We should start to see things back off here in about 24 hours. But again, it's been a long uh, 24 hours here in uh, eastern North Carolina. Mike, I might Let's go explain, back to Atlanta. I might want to explain Alex. to our viewers. So Alex was actually uh, live in Wilmington as well. Her conditions were much calmer than uh, you have been experiencing, Mike. This is Jackie Jarra. So you're just getting in now on one of those heavier rain bands that's been pushing in. How long has that been in your area? Oof. All right, I don't think Mike's able to hear me. I'm sure the winds. I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Navarro. It, it's, Dr. Navarro, it's really hard to hear you out here, and I, I couldn't understand your question. Okay. But uh, the rain bands here on at the intercoastal, uh, you notice the flashing lights behind me. That's the uh, police, Wilmington Rachel Beach Police. They've blocked off the access to the island. It was evacuated on Wednesday, and uh, nobody's allowed over there. So uh, some folks have been wondering why they're over there. That's what there are. That's, that's why they're over there. You go over that bridge and you're on the uh, outer barrier island and no doubt there's been tremendous amounts of erosion and those beaches have been battered uh, in addition to the fact that there's probably been, you know, some some damage over there. Winds uh, earlier this morning gusted to 105 miles an hour at the Wilmington Airport, their second highest gust on record going back uh, way, way back about 100 years. All right. Dr. Thanks. Navarro. All right. Thanks so much, Mike Seidel. We'll get back with you. And, uh, Mike, uh, even as the wind starts to get a little bit better during the day tomorrow, I know it's still really going now, uh, it's going to be a very wet day tomorrow. would not be at all surprising to see a lot of flash flood problems there in Wilmington. Yeah, we're hoping that things begin to relax tomorrow as... Florence finally pulls away slowly, and then it will pick up some forward speed as we get late in the weekend and has more of a stirring flow. But uh, tonight, another uh, rocky night. And you know, even though we're not going to have wind gusts like we had this morning to 105 miles an hour, these 40, 50, even 60 mile an hour gusts will continue to uproot more trees because the ground is so saturated. And the heavy weather moved into Myrtle Beach this morning. They've had upwards of five to six inches of rain uh, around the beach area just since uh, late this morning. Mike Bettis was there today, took quite a battering as we check in with him down the coast. 
And fortunately for Myrtle Beach, the storm weakened. So the fact that when the eye wall in the area got, gets down in that area and the weather they've had, they're not getting the triple digit wind gust. Most of the wind gusts there have been clocked in between about 50 and 60 miles an hour, but still uh, over 80,000 customers without power in South Carolina. Let's go back to Atlanta. Jackie Jarris. Jackie, I apologize for referring you referring to you earlier as Dr. Erica Navarro. That is You're both okay. wonderful human beings. I was going to say, it's <laughs> but not it's, an It's so hard to, to hear out friend. here. But <laughs> I'm sure it's very and hard to hear out there. You've got the latest there. timing on... You've got the latest timing on the weather in Myrtle Beach and Wilmington and when potentially this may begin to wind down, especially right here. Yeah. I, you, we're really looking at all weekend for the most part with the threat of rain and the threat of flooding for sure towards Wilmington, North Carolina to our own Mike Seidel who is live there. And Mike, you've been enduring some of those really heavy rain bands here in the last uh, 30 minutes or so. Yes, and a bit of a break from the wind right now, but it just comes uh, and hits you without notice. The rain backed off just for a minute. Notice on the radar, there is a break between here. You go up the coast to Sneeds Ferry. Notice there was a little dry area, but there's another wide band, that outer band that has been affecting Moorhead City earlier now, more so over the Emerald Isle and extending in towards Jacksonville and Camp Lejeune. Camp Lejeune. So we have a long way to go because simply, as we've told you, uh, the tropical storm, former hurricane Florence is only moving at about three miles an hour. Uh, most of you can probably, I know I can power walk faster than that. So it's a pretty slow movement. It will pick up some forward speed as we get later in the weekend and early next week, heading into the Appalachians and then making a right turn and heading north. But in the meantime, a lot of heavy rain in its path. And we've seen a lot of this around the city of Wilmington. A lot of shingles blown off roofs. Uh, uh, as far as serious structural damage, we haven't seen that. We've seen some gas station awnings come down. Uh, we saw the awning at the Bridge Tender Restaurant. That came down uh, during the uh, eye wall as it came through here uh, early this morning. A lot of trees down, a lot of power out across uh, parts of the Carolinas, again, close to the coast. And it'll be a while, Jackie, before they can get those bucket trucks up. Duke Power, Duke Energy now has a lot of crew stationed from here and out of state. Florida Power came up from Florida, but they can't get the bucket trucks up until the wind dies down. That may not be until Sunday. Oof. Yeah, long ways to go still with this storm. Thanks, Mike. Tropical Storm Florence, he's going to join us in just a minute about where Florence is headed. That's coming up shortly. But first, we want to go live to the Weather Channel's Mike Seidel. And Mike is in Wilmington, North Carolina. And Mike, you've been kind of intermittent in and out of some of these gusty bands. What are conditions like right now? Yeah, we've got a break right now, Jackie. Thank goodness. This is about as light as the winds have been that I've stood in since yesterday morning, and we've been at it morning, noon, and night. Uh, so looking back, uh, when you drive around Wilmington, what you notice right away, a lot of trees down. Take a look, uh, some of the video from around the city uh, here in uh, southeastern North Carolina, and that is why so much power is out. 700 and 44,000 customers in North Carolina and in South Carolina now 157,000 customers. So between the two states, uh, we're up close to a million customers without power. And I think some of those numbers certainly in South Carolina will go up as stronger winds work inland. But the winds will slowly decrease over the next day or so. That's going to help things out as the rainfall continues to add up. We could see another half a foot or foot of rain right here. And we've already had upwards of 20 inches of rain in eastern North Carolina across the uh, bridge where the uh, policemen are over in Riceville Beach. Uh, they reported over 18 inches of rain at lunchtime today. No telling how much more they've picked up. But I'm not going to be surprised. We may already have at Moorhead City broken the record rainfall for North Carolina for a tropical cyclone set 19 years ago during Hurricane Floyd down in uh, Brunswick County in the town or near the town of Southport. Let's go back inside to Carl Parker. Carl, this thing is not moving fast enough for anybody. I don't think there's anybody on the planet who would like to see this thing move a whole lot faster. Yeah, and it's been really tough across parts of North Carolina tonight. Uh First, Wilmington, North Carolina, also still getting slammed by Florence tonight. The Weather Channel's Mike Seidel is live tonight. And Mike, we've been tracking that really heavy band kind of in and out of your region. What's happening right now? Well, right now we're in a break. You can see on the radar that that band has rotated just north and uh, east of us. 
and it's wrapping back in to the interior part of North Carolina. There's another healthy band to our north and east up around Emerald Isle, and that's continuing to wrap back in towards Jacksonville and those areas. So we've, we've got more of this. It's going to continue tonight into tomorrow because of Tropical Storm Florence and its slow movement. Three, four miles an hour all day just crawling along. And as a result, we continue to get these feeder bands. Now, the winds will slowly subside. Right now, they're gusting at about 25 or 30 miles an hour. But when we had those bands last hour, they were gusting between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Uh, it's almost uh, at the same time as the intensity of the rainfall picks up, so does uh, the wind. But a nice break right now. We had a gust earlier this morning, 105 miles an hour with the eye wall, second highest wind gust so far. All around the Wilmington area and around eastern North Carolina, trees down everywhere, whether they were blown down or uprooted over power lines. 750,000 customers in North Carolina without power and about 150,000 or so customers in South Carolina without power. And until the wind comes down, uh, Duke uh, Energy and the power crews coming in to help them from out of state can't get up in the bucket trucks. So the power is going to be out for a while for some folks. I wouldn't be surprised to see some people without power for at least a week. Uh, as far as the rainfall goes, it's going to be six, seven, eight more inches in some of these spots. And we will break that uh, record for the wettest tropical cyclone in the state set back with Floyd 19 years ago and that was just over 24 inches so it's been a wild 24 hours here finally get a bit of a break but uh, this is just a, a short-term law here as we've shown you on the radar bands continue to wrap in off the Atlantic with gusty winds and rainfall rates of one to two inches an hour Jackie yeah, we've got uh, probably a good 24 hours to go with the threat of still some of those strong winds there in Wilmington. We want to get you ca caught up to Mike Seidel. Uh, he is in Wilmington, and Mike, it's been uh, about the wind today, and uh, that's probably going to change a good bit tomorrow. Winds dropping off, but then you start to see just hour after hour after hour of heavy rain coming in off the Atlantic. Yeah, that will be the change tomorrow. The wind's slowly backing off, but the rainfall will continue. Uh, today, by the way, uh, we've had uh, tremendous amounts of rainfall. Wind gust earlier, 105. The worst of the weather hit here starting about 10 o'clock last night. But the storm is moving so slow, it took until about 9 or 10 this morning, about 12 hours later, for the areas of Myrtle Beach and Horry County down the coast in South Carolina to get into the thick of it. That's how slow Florence is and was moving. Mike Bettis was in the thick of it today and files this report. Back here in Wilmington on the Intracoastal, by the way, today at noon's high tide, we had quite a surge. Airly Road, which is back here in the dark, uh, runs by all these uh, great seafood restaurants uh, like the Bridge Tender and, and the Fish House. The, those restaurants were surrounded by the surge and it came across the road. We just had another high tide at midnight and I just walked down the road and I can see the water. There is some surge, but it's not as high as it was tw uh, 12 hours ago, simply because the wind direction has gone from east to northeast around to more of a southerly direction. And so I think now that we're uh, past this high tide, the next one, Jackie, too, the water will be up, but we won't have the surge issues we had at noon on Friday. Let's go back to Jackie Jarris with timing on this here and also down at Myrtle Beach. Jackie? Yeah, we'll get a couple of cities in here and talk about some specific impact. In the dark there, our own Mike Seidel is joining us live now from Willington, North Carolina. And Mike, I don't know if you could see the montage there from all what Stephanie went through today, but you've been there as well. Tell us what it's been like today for you. Well, this morning was uh, pretty wild. We had the eye wall come at us. We were not on the air, but uh, it was very loud at the hotel. And the only lights on are the ones right here powered by generators. Uh, the entire city, as far as I can tell, is dark. The only other lights are the uh, police over here and the sheriffs. They're keeping folks from going over the causeway, over the bridge to Wrightsville Beach, where earlier today they reported 18 and a half inches of rain. I bet they're up to around two feet, and that would, uh, a little over two feet is a record for a tropical cyclone in the state of North Carolina. That was during Floyd back in 1999. Surge today came up, record surge in Wilmington, just over three and a half feet. And 
down here on Airlie Road, the whole road was underwater. It is not that way tonight. So even though we had a high tide about 20 minutes ago, the water is not as high because the wind is now more from the south than the east and northeast, which really piled up the water at the high tide at noon today. It'll be windy into Saturday. The winds, though, the peak gust will back off. The rainfall will not. We've got this these bands that continue to wrap in. And because, simply because, Florence is not moving very fast, three, four miles an hour. Uh, we're going to be into this pattern through tonight into Saturday, through the out the day, Saturday and Saturday night. And then it should start to break down Saturday night and Sunday as the worst of the rain moves inland. Those areas, too, will go under flash flood warnings like we have been here, it seems like, Jackie, since late last night. They just keep extending it and putting out additional flash flood warnings over uh, most of eastern North Carolina. Jackie? Yeah, it's been raining all day. I mean, just unrelenting non-stop even though the winds have died down i imagine you've got to be soaked through the bone is just everything wet everywhere uh yes and uh with the power out there's uh, no dryers in the hotel so i um, hanging my shirts up in the room but uh the rooms are starting to get a little uh a little uncomfortable because there's no air conditioning and uh luckily i have uh four or five more dry shirts. All I think right. by Sunday, the rain will back off a little bit. And uh, eventually, you know, we'll all get back to Atlanta and we'll do some laundry. But in the meantime, <laughs> we've got another two or three days at least, right. uh, and even more for some areas because of the uh, upcoming river flooding right. in uh, parts of South Carolina and North Carolina. Yeah, even after the rain stops, uh, water is going to continue to be a problem. Thanks, Mike. Well, tropicals.